Hey traders, Raggy here and in this recap video we're going to cover something that I know a lot of you already know and that's the cloud that hangs over this market. I don't mean Chinese tariffs or NAFTA relationships with Mexico or anything like that. I'm talking specifically Apple. Apple is a unique stock in that it's number one weighted on the NAS, the S&P and then number six on the Dow. So it's got that it's got a unique impact across all three markets in a way that other no other stock really has. Now, it's tough to want to say that after Apple had been sold off as much as it has been, maybe in, in some way a rejection in front of 200, 203 is at all important $1 trillion market cap, but sold off in front of 200, uh, sold off with the overall uh, move to the downside, basically when the NASDAQ flushed, Apple's going to go with it. Uh, it's hard for even a boat as big as Apple to hang on when the tide goes out, right? Boat versus tide. So that's another thing that we want to keep in mind. I think one of the things that is interesting to me uh, about Apple, and actually I'm watching Bloomberg out of the corner of my eye, and a buddy of mine was actually the one who started this site. Uh, estimize and uh, I'm kind of bummed I can't hear what he's saying but I'll, I'll rewind and check it out but estimize is one of my favorite sites to use when I'm looking at whether or not a stock has a run-up into earnings and I really don't think that Apple has really had a huge run-up into earnings you can see that uh, my EPS estimate up at 225 is a little higher than Wall Street's consensus at 217 and 222, meaning that that crowdsourced consensus is only a nickel higher on average, a nickel higher than uh, Wall Street's number, which means the market wasn't way out ahead of Wall Street and rallied in, in expectation of that. I mean, this is how I gauge how realistic and how likely a run up into earnings is. And same thing on the rev count. Um, my estimate's a little low, it's just above Wall Street, but it looks like the crowdsource is a little higher than company guidance. So if anything has rallied Apple up in front of earnings, it's not been EPS, but rather rev. And you know, look, traders are gonna look at, and investors are gonna look at very carefully what that average sale price was to get a feel for whether those iPhone 10s are actually moving off the shelf. Having said all that, it's been a very meager move, move higher for Apple. And you know, if Apple's not moving up higher, it's tough for the S&P and the NAS to really move up with a lot of vigor as well. Apple's pullback, and it's pulled back into what I think would be a very interesting buy zone. One of the things we've talked about over the last two days has been looking for at the money calls in the 190 area, which is where I'm positioned. I've got the AUG threes from 190. I also have what's known as the strap straddle position in terms of a modified long straddle. It's a long bullish straddle, meaning I'm using an either two to one or three to one call to put ratio. So for every two or three at the money 190 calls that I buy, today I added a handful of puts in case I'm wrong. It's a safety net, it's insurance. They're designed to basically not profit, but in case Apple heads lower, it offsets the loss of the calls that I've bought. Well, what does all this have to do with futures? It's a quick reminder that during earnings season and during certain earnings uh, names, they're going to have an impact on the market. And, I, and I've been telling my traders all day, you don't want to be short into Apple, especially when Apple pulled back and did not have big run into earnings. Now, I'm cutting this right now before any of this happens. So, and the reason I did this, the reason I'm cutting this video so early is so I want you guys to see, this is the thinking that goes into it, okay? And then how I'm positioned, and then you guys get to see how the chips fall, rather than my coming in after the fact and saying, hey, this is what it looked like. You guys get to see exactly what I'm seeing right now. And that's why I think what makes this kind of analysis so good. We've been long the market since this morning, uh, clearing range breakouts and also exhaustion pullbacks. We actually did not trade the NAS in lieu of the NAS, which has been very unpredictable. We went with the S&P, the Dow and the Russell, long positions in all three. And so again, even going into the close, one of the levels that I've been pointing out, and this is super aggressive, but one of the levels I pointed out going into the close is looking for a minimal pullback 
on the S&P to about 28, 12, 20 to 11 and three quarters. Now we just fell shy of that, but if anybody was w looking for at least about an eight or eight and a quarter pullback, think about how much better position they are rather than buying some of the highs or even worse, shorting this market in front of Apple. So I hope this gives you an interesting idea of something that's happening right now and how I'm positioned and why I'm positioned the way I am and some of the tools that I use. And uh, let's see what happens with Apple. I'm pretty darn bullish, but I'm covered either way. So we'll see what happens. And again, really still quite bullish in the equity space via these index futures. I'll see you in the next update.